So, uh, you know, we, we definitely would want to have more representation of culturally and linguistically diverse healthcare providers, but we recognize that that may not be possible. So, uh, we also feel that it's important to culturally, to train them in culturally, in being culturally and proficient. Um, and again, this comes from the state of Illinois and their efforts in addressing the health disparity. And we should also have linguistically proficient, and in this case, we're meaning uh, or translators when necessary, and professionally, um, you and use professionally, and also having individuals to advocate um, or to answer questions for the individuals for the patient care that's needed, um, and to also recognize um, what. What does the speech community come with? What are their values, their thoughts, their beliefs on the healthcare system? And address, um, address those issues that they come with. That's just like I was um, working as, as a community outreach nurse prior to mm -hmm. ah, And okay. they sent me to the community do, to do a health fair. Uh -huh. So looking at the address, I did not know that it was highly populated Hispanic community. Okay. So they only sent me by myself. Okay, and I took all this English literature yes. on diabetes and everything. Okay, yes. so I did do the finger stick, okay. and I did do the blood pressure, but okay. I was no good to do patient education because they couldn't understand me and I couldn't understand Absolutely. them. And all that literature I had, everything I had yeah. was English. Sure. Well, the following year, I did actually come back because I felt so bad. Fantastic. So the following Fantastic. year, um, I did take another nurse, uh, a bilingual nurse with me, Wonderful. and all that literature was like English on one side, then you turn it over okay. to Spanish because I felt okay. so bad. I really felt bad. Well, the fact that you even had that available mm -hmm. to provide um, the speech community that was, um, you know, Spanish speaking is a wonderful thing. Um, and to have the resource to be able to find a bilingual mm -hmm. um, a colleague to accompany you um, to this fair is, a, is wonderful. And again, these are, you know, grassroots approach to addressing the health disparity right. issue. Actually, you know? the person that from that employment this this factory i told them whenever they request someone to do a health fair because looking at the address you wouldn't have known that it was in a highly uh hispanic population i Absolutely. didn't know that so i told her you can't look at the address sure. and i wasn't familiar with this company so from sure. now on when she has a health fair any kind of outreach for the employees at that uh, particular uh place sure. always just put in parentheses the can you have a bilingual person or something? Can you have bilingual sure. literature and stuff? And right. you know, because right. are you going to have more people right. to show up like that? Right. And, and to know, to have someone who's familiar with the culture that that's being mm -hmm. it's being presented to, you know, um, you know, and, and you know, that's definitely something that's mm -hmm. very important. And and I think when we address health disparities. Um, as a nation and as a state, we need to address that. And and, and the, this information is um, what this is leading to is to say um, what I'm going to show next is where are we as in the field of speech language pathology? Where are we at providing um, the necessary support for culturally and linguistically diverse populations? You know, how many of us speech language pathologists are bilingual in Spanish? How much of us are culturally proficient and trained to work with the population that is experiencing this health disparity? Okay. Um, so we have the need, uh, we definitely have the need to address this disparity. So ASHA. ASHA is the American Speech Language Hearing Association. It is a professional, scientific, and credentialing associated association that speech language pathologists, um, audiologists, and speech language and hearing scientists are part of. In 2009, there were 140,000 um, speech language pathologists in this country, in, in this nation. Of this um, 
a population of 140,000, a little over 140,000. The racial minority of speech language pathologists, um, audiologists, and speech language hearing scientists was 6.9% were members of a race, consider themselves a member of a racial minority. 1.3% consider themselves multiracial, and 3.7% identify themselves as um, Hispanic or Latino. So a very small percentage of culturally and linguistically, linguistically diverse groups within the field of speech and language pathology. And um, um, what we see here, again, is uh, just that information being further identified not only with Latino, the Latino population, but other minority groups. The Hispanic or Latino population, as I mentioned, um, <clears throat> is 3.7, 4,000 represents 3.7 of those identified, identifying themselves as Hispanic or Latino. Um, then we have American Indian, Native, Asian, and Black, or African American. Um, so the next largest group is uh, the African American by the uh, African American speech pathologist. And then the next largest minority group is uh, the Asian uh, speech language pathologist. But if you think of this information as far as the U.S., um, it's quite small um, as far as the minority representation in the field of speech language pathology. <clears throat> this report represents data from ASHA's 2009 member counts on bilingual service provision alongside data from the U.S. Census Bureau uh, of 2008. The first column here shows us um, is the percentage of individuals in a given state, and for us, we're gonna focus on the state of Illinois, who say they speak English less than very well. And as we see here, 9.8% of individuals who live in the state of Illinois um, indicate that they speak English less than very well. And so these individuals would require services in a language other than English, okay? The second column uh, represents those who speak a language other than English as a primary language at home. And in Illinois, that's 21.7%. So while some of these individuals in this column, 21.7% of these individuals um, may be fluent or close to fluent in English, they may feel more comfortable discussing medical issues or educational issues in their native language. Okay. Yet what we see of in the state of Illinois, the number of bilingual speech pathologists available to this population is only 248 or 4.0%. So a very small percentage of speech, bilingual speech language pathologists who would be able to provide um, support to individuals who consider themselves um, speakers who have limited English proficiency. This table shows Spanish language service providers by the state compared with, um, again, the American community service data, the data that comes from, um, from the U.S. Census Bureau. 